You don't have um, you don't have um, low battery set up? Maybe I do, but I don't know. Go to yeah, if you go to settings and you go to battery, click on battery, it'll say turn on to say battery saver and battery better work. And it's gonna be a little bit Mm-hmm. Oh, you have app you have an iPhone? Yeah, it's Apple. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. 
Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. According to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who's not a shepherd and, a, and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I've received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. And we're on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's one of those Sundays that has a nickname, and uh, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday to, to you all, to us all. And some Sundays in the church calendar have a nickname. We have Mission Sunday, we have a Mercy Sunday. Next week we're going to have another one with a nickname, but I'll, I'll talk about that next uh, in the announcements. In the meantime, uh, just to speak about this great this great day, always the fourth Sunday of Lent. We always, we call it the Good Shepherd Sunday because as the, the readings are scheduled, we always get the 10th chapter of John's Gospel where he says, I am the Good Shepherd. He's kinda, he says it proudly and it's, 
it's kind of beautiful to think, you know. We heard him today. He says, uh, I know mine, and mine know me. And uh, he even says in the same chapter 10, I call my sheep by name. So Pope Francis was commenting on this, commenting on this uh, chapter, and he was speaking about uh, the priests. He said priests should know the names of their parishioners. In fact, he said, not only should he know the names of his parishioners, he said he should he should even know the names of their dogs. <laughs> so after mass, we're going to have a little cue card to fill out so we can know learn your dog's names. Now, you know I've been away for uh, the three-month sabbatical, and in that great experience, I went precisely to study a good shepherd. Uh, I went to study uh, um, St. Oscar Romero, and uh, he was a, a bishop in El Salvador, and, and, and it was close to the people. He was a good and holy shepherd, and I want to, I mean, one episode from his life what kind of resonates with me comes from uh, right after he was named the Archbishop of San Salvador. He, he was just there two weeks when one of the priests was killed by government forces. And, of course, he was immediately there close to the people. And um, because the government refused to do an investigation about who was responsible for the death of this one of his priests, who was also a personal friend of his. They had known each other long before Bishop Romero became a bishop. And he said, uh, he made a, a kind of a, a bold decision. He said, we're not going to have Mass in the individual parishes this coming Sunday. He said, we're going to have one Mass as a sign of solidarity. I'm asking all the priests to come and come celebrate the Mass and that we'll all be there together. And I'm asking the people to come. You know, over half a million people came. And they filled the cathedral and the whole plaza and the region outside the plaza as well. Um, and in that mass, he said, anyone touches one of my priests, touches me, he said. You know, that uh, deeply touched the heart of his priests to hear him say that. And previously, he he wasn't really accepted by the clergy of the Diocese of San Salvador. But, um, but later on, but with that, they began to draw close to him. And uh, in fact, they, they wrote a letter to him. And, in, and they all signed it. It says, anyone who touches our archbishop touches the heart of the church. Beautiful. You know, I know... Uh, Myself, I know Father Vincent would share this sentiment. Without doubt, Bishop Byrne and Father Pergini as well, who are with us. You know, anyone who touches one of my parishioners touches me. That's the way I feel. And I know they would agree too. It's like the spirit of St. Paul when he was uh, writing to Corinthians. He said something in the same, with the same tone. He says, I'm in so much stress because I'm concerned about all the churches. Who is weak and I'm not weak with them? Who's led astray without my being furious about it? So that, uh, it shouldn't surprise, I suppose, the same St. Paul told the church of the Philippians, you know, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. Beautiful. So it, it, it's a day where we recognize in the church how great it is that we have in our church built in fathers. The way Jesus structured his church, you know, in, in the governance of it, there would be men who were chosen by God, assigned by God, responsible to God to take care of us which is great, you know? Your pastor didn't choose you. You didn't choose your pastor. It was God who chose us for each other. 
And that's the will of Jesus, that we have shepherds in the church chosen, assigned, responsible to God for it. And to think that there's someone in charge of me, responsible to take care of my soul, and has to answer to it for God. With all the hiccups and glitches and sinfulness that exists, it remains true. And I think this shows the genius of Jesus because it's a need in our heart to have a spiritual father. In fact, what's interesting, the law of the church, which we call canon law, says that um, the pastor of a parish is responsible not only for the people who come to church, not only for the Catholics, the, uh, the pastor is responsible for, for Jewish people and our Protestant brothers and sisters and Muslims, Jewish people, everybody, non-believers. So if you measure the boundaries here south of the Bruckner, all the way over to the, to the Bronx River, all the way over to the Westchester Creek, down to Classen Point, I'm responsible before God for all of them, for all of you. And I love my job. But it's, it's, it's huge. So maybe that's why the church is also named this, not just Good Shepherd Sunday, but also World Day of Prayer for Vocations, because this is a real need in the church. Because when I grow old and, and die, who will take my place? And in fact, that's where we are in the, in, the, in the church. We have this change, remember some years back, called making all things new. We're almost at the point where, where we're going to have to have priests to cover two and three parishes. The, the mass structure would have to be changed to accommodate the need. And our spiritual fathers will be stretched very thin thinner than Father Vincent. So we're going to need, that's, that's why we pray for prayers. Prayers for vocation. Asking God, send, Lord, into your harvest workers for the harvest. Um, so therefore, uh, we're going to add that to the prayer of the faithful today. Pray a special way for vocations in the church, especially to the priesthood, especially from Holy Cross Church. You know, but we could talk about the shepherds with an S of the church. But I also think it's important to speak about the shepherd. I mean, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's about Jesus. Although he shares his shepherding with, with shepherds, it's him, the, he is the one we thank and we glorify today. You know, you almost get a sense of, I would dare say, pride in the words he says today, maybe even defiance in the tone of what he says. He says, I will lay down my life for my sheep. He's proud of that. In fact, so proud, he's like bragging about it when he compares himself, I'm the good shepherd, compares himself to those other pretenders to be shepherd who run away when the wolf comes. They don't care. That's not our good shepherd. That's not Jesus he laid down his life, and it was a, a firm and clear decision. He said it. And again, that same tone. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. And it makes me feel great that I have a shepherd, a good shepherd who will do that for me. So, uh, you know, this coming Wednesday is the Feast of St. One of the relatively new saints in the church, Saint Gianna Mola. Uh, she died, in fact, in fact on this day, uh, on this coming uh, Wednesday, 59 years ago, which is relatively new in, a, in the church's panoply of, of two millennia of saints. But I think our story highlights the words of Jesus that he lived out, saying how he would lay down his life for his sheep. Because she was called upon God to do the same thing in a different way. And her sacrifice sheds light on Jesus as well. So she was actually born on the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, October 4th. 
in the year 1921. She was from a big Catholic family, very devout. She was the tenth of 13 children. So the church, and I personally feel very grateful that her parents didn't stop with nine children. She, um, she was very bright, always involved in her local parish. Um, she felt called to, to, to become a doctor. And her goal was to follow her brother, who was a missionary priest in Brazil, who actually himself is a servant of God on his way to becoming a saint. Um, she had a, uh, her uncle was a bishop. Her, uh, she had a cousin of a priest. Her brother was a priest. Her sister was a nun. So she comes from, she comes from good roots in her Catholic upbringing. But she knew she was going to uh, become an OBGYN, a woman's doctor, and go with her brother to Brazil to so set up a clinic to help poor women there. But her health didn't enable her to do it. She pursued advanced medical studies to add to her, her, her medical degree, uh, an emphasis on pediatrics as well. And um, she practiced medicine and until 1954, when she continued to practice medicine, when she met the man of her dreams. Pietro Molla was his name. Uh, he died 10 years ago. Uh, he was an engineer. They met in December. They were engaged. And uh, nine months later, they were married. They got married in the Basilica of St. Saint Martin in her hometown of Magenta. And, uh, and f interestingly, on their honeymoon, for their honeymoon, they went to, to, to Rome, to St. Peter's Basilica. She wanted to have that experience of, of what is still is a tradition now. If you get married, uh, couples put their wedding dress on, they put their, the gentleman puts his tuxedo on, and they go to St. Peter's Square on a Wednesday, and the Pope gives a special blessing to the newly married. And so she did that. That was part of her honeymoon, something she wanted to do. Um, they started having children. They had ch three children right away. Pierluigi, Pierluigi, Mariolina, and Laura. And then shortly thereafter, she was, uh, she conceived her fourth child. And um, in, that, in the course of that pregnancy, she was diagnosed with a fibroma in her uterus. Now, she was a, 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 a woman's doctor herself. She knew what this meant. But her own doctors told her that she had some choices. You know, they recommended a, an abortion. She would never do that. They gave her another option. They would do a complete hysterectomy, which would indirectly take the life of her unborn child. And any moral theologian would say that this is this is a illicit procedure because the, the principle of double effect that wasn't any desire to, to harm the child, but because this tissue was damaged. But she didn't accept that. They were gonna, the other, third option was to remove the fibroma and her pregnancy would continue, but she would not survive after pregnancy. What would you do? She has three little children. She has a husband. And she opted to remove the fibroma. She told the doctors that her child's life was more important than her own life. So five months later, little Gianna Emanuela was born. That was the 21st of April, 1962. And within a week, a week of immense pain, uh, Gianna Mola, the mother, also died. died. And her daughter lived. You know, her husband, Pietro, told their four children that their mom made this decision both as a mother and as a doctor. With the love of a mother's heart, 
and the knowledge of a medical doctor knowing exactly what was in store for her. And the way she saw it was, I, I, and it was, I lay down my life so that my daughter may live. Her daughter, by the way, became an uh, OBGYN doctor herself. And she was not, she was in this country a short time ago. She was also present there in 1993 when St. John Paul II declared her mother blessed and 10 years later as well when she was declared a saint. She made this decision she was not obliged to make and laid down her life for her daughter. This is what Jesus himself did. You know, St. Augustine said that Jesus would have laid down his life even if only one person would have benefited. If you were the only one, just you, to benefit from his death, he would have died for you and for you alone. I lay down my life for my sheep. He is the one we honor today, this good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Life passes. Riches evaporate. Popularity is fickle. Youthful vigor decays. The world changes. Friends die. Only one is constant. Only one is true to us. Only one can be all things to us. Only one supplies all our needs. Only one can change us to become the one he had created us to be. Only one gives true meaning to our lives. Only one brings true peace to our existence. Only one is our savior. And that very one is also our good shepherd. That one is ours. And glory be to God, we are his. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Good Shepherd tends his father's flock, so we ask God to help our brothers and sisters. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people preparing for confirmation and graduation be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Easter in every time and place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, especially the sick and homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Monsignor Dermot R. Brennan, Pedro Santana Gonzalez, Antonia Vasquez, Laura, Gladys Perez, and Sister Gertrude, and all who have died for whom we have offered a funeral mass or service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Pereira, for whom this mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions that lie within our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. On this World Day of Prayer for Vocations, we want to ask for vocations from our own parish to priesthood, to religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, you sent your Son to care for your flock. Hear and grant what we ask, in Jesus' name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Because the Lord is my shepherd. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live now to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, our universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt, sing your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, James Pereira Sr., whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, room, but only only say the the word, word, and my soul soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated, everybody. We have a number of announcements. Not sure if you you can't miss, I guess, the um, the little sheet in front of you. Put three in each pew of the QR codes. Uh, if you just um, put your smartphone's camera on there, you can get the links to all the things. I wish I thought to do this earlier because we don't have our missiles, and you can get the daily readings that are right there. We have the links for English and Spanish. We have the link to our website. The link to our Facebook page, and I promised last time that we would have the link to the Cardinal's Appeal, and also to um, people who prefer to give electronically, it's right there, you could do it. So um, I wanted to give an update of the Cardinal's Appeal and give everybody that easy way, contact free, to be able to support it right there in the pew. Uh, and more good news, thank you, last week I mentioned we made it to 70% of our goal much earlier than any previous year since I've been here, and we went from 70% to 75% even in this last week with total gifts of $44,672.30 towards our overall goal of $59,500. That's just from 150 of our family, so thank you so much. Now, in order to do it, you, you need a smartphone. If you have a dumb phone, it's not going to work. <laughs> but, but you can still... We put in the back of the church, there's also the, the envelopes, the traditional way to support the Cardinal's Appeal is there. Some prefer that, and that's, that would be, that's great too. However, we are asking each family to give, even if it's a small gift, to the Cardinal's Appeal. Now, um, this coming Saturday, we begin the month of May already, thank, thank the Lord, and uh, it's the month of Mary, the month of Moms. And I know a lot of our parishioners would like to enroll their beloved moms in the novena of masses that have been offered here for years. Uh, at the doors of the church are the, the envelopes to, to sign up. If you have the envelope system, you get that envelope already. You please do print the names of your mom, grandmother, ma, godmother. And then we put them on the altar from Mother's Day forward for the rest of the month of May. We pray for them. They're especially included in the, in the novena of masses that we have. Um, but if you're blessed to have your mom still with you, um, there's also greeting cards that you could give to your mom that says that they're enrolled in this novena. And uh, the outer envelope, can you can write her name on that or, or the names of all the motherly figures in your life. And, um, and we'll put those on the altar as well. So that's as you leave the church today. Now, I said that today is a day that has a nickname. We call today Good Shepherd Sunday. But here in Holy Cross Church, we've developed a tradition to name next Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter, with a special nickname. Do you remember? The fifth Sunday of Easter we celebrate here as Sit Somewhere Else Sunday. <laughs> remember that? Remember how many of you wrote down to the cardinal to say what a bad idea it was? So the idea is we come to Mass and we traditionally sit in the same place. We have people that have been sitting in, in the same seat for over 40 years. And they got angry when we had to make it every other pew. They moved the green tape so they could sit in their, in their seat. But, you know, the more relationships and friendships you have in the church, the more likely you are to continue in the life of the church. And the less relationships and friendships you have in the church, the less likely you are to, to continue and persevere in your faith and the practice of it. So um, we thought, it, the reason why we do it next Sunday is next Sunday is that Sunday where the reading is Jesus saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. And he says, every branch that bears, bears fruit my Father prunes so that it will bear more fruit. So by leaving the place where we usually sit in our comfort zone and the people we're used to greeting at the sign of peace and talking to before or after Mass, by leaving them and going somewhere else, 
We prune those old relationships that will continue, of course, and we open up ourselves to new friendships in the church. And that's something good. That's something we want. So that's the explanation behind Sit Somewhere Else Sunday, and that's next Sunday. I, we have some uh, nice blessings today. We're going to start with the birthday blessings. I have Antonio Badillo and uh, Maria Aviles are the ones who put their names forward. There might be one more who's here to celebrate their birthday, but they can come up too. Actually, we're, uh, the, we're doing social distancing, so I don't have my mask on. If you just step down the, uh, this is the way we're doing the blessings now. Don't be mad. In, in other times, we'd be right up there next with you, but that's why we decided uh, uh, when we brought back the blessings to do it. And uh, we want to ask all of our congregation to share in this blessing. So if you could just raise your right hand over Antonio and over Maria for this special prayer of blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. And our annual return of our birthday is a day for us to remember how grateful we are for the gift of life. Thank you for Maria and Antonio and the many blessings you've showered on them. We ask you to continue to do so, Lord. We join them in thanking you for the gift of their lives. And we ask you that with many more blessings and many more birthdays to come, they may serve you with their strength, and made all redound to your glory as we ask your blessing on them, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give a nice round of applause to our compañeros. Now, as they make their way back to their seat, we also have a nice anniversary blessing where Ivan and Sonia have a nice anniversary. So could we ask our, our, um, our, do we tell how many years it's been? 41? 40. I'm sorry, it only feels like 41. <laughs> we all know how the great, the great servants of the church, Sonia and Ivan are, and we're delighted to give them this 40th anniversary blessing. Could we all raise our right hand in blessing over Sonia and Ivan? Heavenly Father, 40 years ago, you united in holy matrimony your servants, Ivan and Sonia. Their love has been fruitful, and their service to your church has been great. We ask you, Lord, to ever increase their love for each other. We beg you, Lord, that the sacrament of marriage, which you have conferred on them, which has borne so much fruit in their lives and in the life of this church, continue to do so, Lord. You have made a marriage of covenant which symbolizes the love of Christ and his church. May Sonia and Ivan radiate that love, not just when they're here, not just when they're home together, but even when they're apart and in every moment of their lives, that this sacrament may continue to flourish in and through them and bear fruit in your church. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We want to invite the groom to kiss the bride. Take off your mask. And I invite us all to please stand for our final blessing in our St. Michael prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruination of souls, Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn, Go Out, Go Out.